Welcome back, everybody. Markets popping on this day, but when it started, we were talking about some bad earnings reports from Johnson & Johnson and IBM, both warning of the strength of the U.S. dollar and how that would hold them back in future quarters. Let's talk about that, amongst many other things, with David Sokol. He's the CEO of Teton Capital, the former CEO of NetJets, and the author of America in Perspective. Good to see you, sir. Thank you for being here in studio. Well, so the strength here. of the dollar, some people are all excited, China gets to go buy a Prada bag for a lot less over there in Europe. I'm just I hope. With you. But IBM and Johnson & Johnson warning that it's going to hurt future quarters. How significant, what are the implications of the strength of the U.S. dollar today? Well, I think they're, they're predominantly caused by the fact that the U.S. Federal Reserve is moving faster to try and control inflation and moving our interest rates up. And I think that's the European Union <clears throat> has taken a much slower, slower pace, as is Japan. And I think that's that's fundamentally the primary driver of the difference in, this, in the uh, currencies. It affects business, but if you do business around the world, you know, it's something you deal with uh, annually and it'll, it'll go up and it'll come back down. So I think it's it's something you have to manage from the standpoint of how you know, reporting your earnings and, and occasionally hedging. But it's a tough it's a tough thing to hedge if you're in a lot of different countries. So I think it's it's really um, from my perspective, we kind of separated out of the earnings when we when we look at a company. David, when you take a look at the most recent inflation numbers, 9.1% was the latest print that we got on inflation. Rising prices, obviously a huge issue when we uh, couple that with a slowing economy. What do you think the Fed should do to get inflation under control? Well, they're smarter about it than I am, and they have a lot more data. But I think the reality is they need to move as they are quickly. Um, I think in hindsight, it would have been better to see 75 basis points at their first move. And uh, uh, frankly, I'd be comfortable with 100 basis points in the next move, <clears throat> e even if it turns out to be slightly too much. The louder the message that the Fed's serious, uh, the better. We're, we're seeing the economy adjust. Um, uh, housing contracts, uh, mortgage applications, all kinds of different indications. But, but inflation is a dangerous thing, and particularly when we have such a totally uh, strange energy policy, if you want to call it that, although I would, I'm not sure it's a policy. But um, that piece of the inflation is not going anywhere soon because we're, we're constricting supply. You know, demand destruction with high prices will happen. But, you know, the United States has the ability to be producing 15 million barrels a day, and, and we're now almost 2 million barrels a day less uh, than we could two years ago. And uh, that's a lot in, in, in the overall global uh, energy sector. So I think the Fed needs to get the economy uh, slowed down and people recognize it quickly. Are you suggesting the Biden administration has held back production, domestic production? Well, they've done, you know, the, the, the problem with this administration and I think several administrations in a row are we don't have a plan. And uh, the first steps out of the blocks of stopping Keystone Pipeline, things of that nature, from my perspective, the, the, uh, the, the blood of an economy is energy. And, and until you have alternatives to shift to, you can't be restricting you know, your best sources. You can make them more efficient. You can, you can place regulation in place to cause industry to, to adjust. But the, it, to me, it's, it's, it's schizophrenic to be trying to, to stop the use of, of clean natural gas until we have alternatives, until we reintroduce nuclear power. Because you, you can't reduce the global CO2 footprint unless you use an enormous amount of nuclear power. Mm -hmm. It's just not, not engineering-wise. I've spent my career in the energy industry, and it, it just isn't doable. So that was a huge misstep. And unfortunately, it was for political reasons rather than any, any accomplishment reasons. And David, I want to bring in, uh, obviously, the title of your book includes The American Dream. A lot of middle class Americans struggling right now. According to data from Primerica, 75 percent of middle class households say their income is falling below the cost of living. What is this doing to the American dream? It used to be about about having the house, but then you see house prices also too high for a lot of people to afford. Well, the American American dream, I believe, and it's the reason Adam and I wrote the book, is is alive and well. And my primary motivation is to make sure a young man a uh, young girl from rural Nebraska or rural America has the same opportunity uh, to chase their dream that we had. And, and I think it's there. America is exceptional. But we have to get back. One of the big mistakes we're making as a country, and this isn't meant towards left or right, it's meant to both, is our Constitution was, was created to develop consensus when we make major decisions. And we've gotten away from that. We now want to bludgeon each other from, from the right or the left 
that, that we're right, you're wrong. And the, the entire legacy of our country to date and the success is based on the self-healing nature of a capitalistic meritocracy based on consensus. And just, I mean, take the, the issue about CO2. We've not reached a consensus in this country. People claim we have. People say it's absolutely proven, but where's the plan? Where's the long-term plan to get China and India involved? All of these things are, are creating this image to the young people in this country that there is no American dream. You know, you think about it, has anybody ever talked about the China dream or the European dream or the Russian dream? The reason it was a dream for Americans is because it's a country, the first country in history that was formed by the people and by the founding fathers. But one of the key tenets was it takes 75 percent of the states to amend our Constitution. It takes 60 percent in the Senate to pass a bill, uh, two thirds to impeach someone. Those were all uh, intentionally put there to control consensus that we don't rule from the right or the left. We rule from the middle. We've lost that, and I think that's sending the wrong message to young men and women today, because the reality is with technological change and those things, if we get back on track, I would love to be 18 again. Uh, because, because, you know, you can get, when I was younger, it, it cost a lot to start a business, because heavy industry and things of that nature, you know, you just, I certainly didn't have the pocketbook. Today, the technology allows young people to be creative in, in, on a phone and, and create real value. And, you know, and I, I make one other comment, you know, the American dream isn't just about being a business person or getting rich. Maybe it's about being an artist or a great teacher, but chasing your dream. That's mm -hmm. still there. Now, no question, the current inflation situation that wages aren't keeping aren't keeping up with inflation. Um, you know, we went a long time without that scenario. We've got to fix it. That's why the Federal Reserve has really got to take this seriously even if it puts us into a general recession. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's the price we're gonna pay for throwing too much money into the economy uh, from government stimulus. Jerome Powell's been clear about that. He is willing to do what it takes to kill inflation. You're speaking my language, but consensus builders in Washington, D.C. are an endangered species, if not in, extinct entirely. But I look forward to reading the book. It is America in Perspective, Defending the American Dream for the Next Generation. David, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate your you. time. Look forward to reading it.